live from Midtown Manhattan, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2017. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem sponsors. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in New York City for theCUBE's coverage of Big Data NYC, our event we've been running for five years, been covering the big data space for eight years, since 2010 when it was Hadoop World, Strata Conference, Strata Hadoop, Strata Data, soon to be called Strata AI. This is the Cube. We've been the Cube all, all eight years here live in here. I'm John Furrier. Our next guest is Murthy Matha Prakasam, who's the director of product marketing at Informatica. Uh, Cube alumni has been on many times. We cover Informatica World uh, every year. Uh, great to see you. Thanks for coming by and, and coming in. You. you guys know data, so it's not a lot of recycling of what's going on in the data business. We've been talking about it all week. Total transformation. But the undercurrent has been, well first of all, a lot of AI, AI of this, and you guys have the Claire product and do a lot of things there. But outside of the AI, the, uh, the, a lot of the uh, undertone is cloud, cloud, cloud. Governance, governance, governance. There's a two kind of the drivers I've been seeing as the forces this week is a lot of people trying to get their act together on those two fronts. And you can kind of see the scabs on the industry. People haven't, some people haven't been paying attention and they're weak in the area. Cloud is absolutely going to be driving the big data world because data's horizontal, mm -hmm. cloud's the power source to that, you guys have been on that. What's your thoughts? What are the drivers and currency? First of all, do you agree with what I'm saying and what else did I miss? I mean, no. security's obviously in there, but. Absolutely, no, so I think you're exactly right on. So obviously governance, uh, security's a big deal, uh, largely being driven by the GDPR regulation that's happening in Europe, but I mean, every company today is global, so everybody's essentially affected by it. So I think, Data up till now has always been a kind of opportunistic thing that you know there's a couple guys in the organization who are looking at it as oh let's do some experimentation let's do something interesting here now it's becoming government mandate and so mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of organizations who are like to your point getting their act together and that's driving a lot of demand for data management products so mm -hmm. now people say well if I had to get my act together I don't have to hire armies of people to do it let me look for automated you know machine learning based ways yeah. of doing it so that they can actually deliver on the audit reports that they need to deliver on, ensure yeah. the compliance that they need to ensure, but do it in a very scalable way. I've been kind of joking all week, I've kind of had this meme in my head, so I've been pounding on it all week, calling it the tool shed problem. The tool shed problem is everyone's got these tools, they throw them into the tool shed, they bought a hammer, and the company that sold them the hammer is trying to turn into a lawnmower, right? <laughs> so like, you, know, you can't mow your lawn with a hammer, and it's not going to work. And so there's, there's tools are great, but it defines work, right? what right. you do. But the platforming issue is a huge one, and you're starting to see people who took that view, you guys were one of them, because in a platform-centric view with tools that are enabled to be highly productive, you don't have to worry about new things like a governance policy, a GDPR that might pop up, or the next Equifax that's around the corner. There's probably two or three of them going on right now. Mm -hmm. So that's an, an impact. Um, the data, who uses it, how it's used, and who's at fault or whatever. So how does a company deal with that, and machine learning has proven to be a great horse that a lot of people are riding right now. You guys are doing it. How does a customer deal with that tsunami of potential threats, architecture challenges, what's your solution? How do you talk about that? Well, I think machine learning, you know, up till now has been seen as a kind of nice to have, and I think very quickly it's going to become a must have, because exactly like you're saying, it really is a tsunami. I mean, you can see people who are nervous about the fact that, I mean, there's different estimates. It's like 40% growth in data assets for most organizations every year. Mm -hmm. So you can try to get around this somehow with the, you know, one of these kludgy tools or something, but at some point, something's going to break. Either you just don't yeah. run out of manpower, you can't train the manpower, uh, people start leaving, whatever the operational challenges are, it just isn't going to scale. Machine learning is the only approach, it is absolutely the only approach that actually ensures that you can maintain data for these kind of defensive reasons, like you're saying, the security mm -hmm. and compliance, but also the kind of offensive opportunistic reasons and do it scalably. Because there's just no other way, mathematically speaking, yeah, yeah. when the data is growing 40% a year, uh, you know, just throwing a bunch of tools at it just doesn't work. Yeah, I would even just amplify and look right in the camera saying, if you're not on machine learning, you're out of business. That's a straight up obvious trend because that's a, pre a, a, a precursor to AI, real AI. All right, let's get down to data management. So people throwing around data management like it's like, oh yeah, we got some data management. There are challenges with that. Um, you guys have been there from day one, but now you, if you take it out in, out in the future, how do you guys provide data management in a totally cloud world where now the customer certainly has public and private or on-premise, but they might have multi-cloud. So now it comes a land grab for the data layer. How do you guys uh, play in that? Well, I think it's, uh, 
a great opportunity for these kind of middleware platforms that actually do span multiple clouds, that can span the internal environment. So I'll, I'll give you an example. Yesterday we actually had a customer speaking uh, at Strata here, and he was talking about, from him, the cloud is really just a natural extension of what they're already doing because they already have a sophisticated data practice. This is a large financial services organization. And he's saying, well, now the data isn't all inside. It's some of it's outside. We've got partners who've got data outside. How do we get to that data? Well, it's, uh, clearly the cloud is the path for doing that. So the fact that the cloud is a natural extension of what a lot of organizations were already doing internally means they don't want to have a completely different approach to the data management. They want to have a consistent, simple, systematic, repeatable approach to the data management that spans, as you said, on-premise, in the cloud. And that's what I think the opportunity of a very mature and sophisticated platform because you're not rewriting okay. and replatforming for every new, you know, is it AWS, is it Azure, is it yeah. something on-premise? You just want something that works and right. shields you from the underlying infrastructure. So I'm going to put my skeptic hat on for a second and challenge you on this because this I think is fundamental. Whether it's real or not, it's perceived, maybe in the mind, back of the mind of the CXO or whatever, whoever the CDO, whoever's enabled to make these big calls. Hmm. If, if they're the keys of the kingdom, Informatica, I'm going to get locked in. So this is a deep fear. People wake up with nightmares in, in the enterprise because they've seen locked in before. How do you explain that to a customer that you're going to be an enabling opportunity for them, not a lock in and foreclosing future benefits? Especially when I have an unknown scenario called multi-cloud. I mean, no one's really doing multi-cloud, let's face it. I mean, I have multiple clouds, stuff on it, but no one's- It's not intentionally. No I mean, one's sometimes really, you got a line of businesses and doing things, but absolutely. I no one's really yeah. moving workloads dynamically between clouds in real time. Maybe a few people doing some hacks, but for the most part, it's not a standard practice. Right. But they want it to be. Absolutely. So, that's the future. Yep. From today to there, how do you preserve that position of uh, with the customer where you say, hey, we're going to add value, but we're not going to lock you in? So the whole premise, again, of, I mean, this goes back to classic three-tier models of how you think about you know, technology stacks, right? There's an infrastructure layer, there's a platform layer, there's an analytics layer. And the whole premise of the middleware layer, the platform layer, is that it enables flexibility in the other two layers. It's precisely when you don't have something that's kind of intermediating the data and the use of the data, that's when you run into challenges uh, with flexibility and with data being locked in a particular data store. But you're absolutely right. We had dinner with a bunch of our customers last night. They were talking about how they had essentially evaluated like every version of sort of a big data platform, a big data infrastructure platform, right? And why? It was because they're a large organization and you know different teams start spun yeah. up stuff and then they had to like, you know, compete them out and stuff. And I was like, well, that must have been pretty hard for you guys. I'm like, well, we were using Informatica, so it didn't really matter where the data was. We were still doing everything as far as the data management goes from a consistent layer, and you guys, are, we integrate with all of those different platforms. Uh, then for so you didn't get in the way. We didn't get you in the way. We're, we're facilitating increased flexibility because without a, fle a layer like that, a fabric or whatever you want to call it, a data platform that's facilitating this, the complexity is going to get very, very crazy very soon if it hasn't already. The number of infrastructure platforms that are available, like you said, on-premise and in the cloud now, keeps growing. The number of analytical tools that are available is also growing. And all of this is amazing innovation, by the way. This is all yeah. great stuff. Yeah. But to your point about if you're the chief data officer of an organization, just going, I got to get this thing like figured out somehow. Yeah. I need some sanity. Yeah. That's really the purpose of... They the, just don't want another tool for a tool's sake, they, we need to have it you be purposeful. And that's why I think this machine learning aspect is very, very critical, because mm -hmm. I was thinking kind of about an analogy just like you were, you know, I was thinking like, uh, in a way you can think of data management as sort of like cleaning stuff up, and there's people who have like brooms and mops and you know, all these different tools. Well, we're bringing a Roomba to the to market, right? <laughs> so, because yeah. you don't want to just create tools that like transfer the labor around, which is a little bit of what's been going on. Yeah. You want to actually get the labor out of the equation so that the people are focused on business context, business strategy, and the data management is sort of cleaning itself up. You know, it's doing the work for you. That's really what Informatica's vision is. It's about being a kind of enterprise cloud data management vendor that is leveraging AI under the hood so that you can just sort of set it and forget it. A lot of the this ingestion, the cleansing, you know, telling analysts what yeah. data they should be looking for, all this stuff is just happening in an automated way, and you're not in this like tool chaos. Yeah, and that and that can begin to and we really just it builds up some tools that are sitting in the back for a long time. I mean, my tool shed when I had one back, a big enough property back east, <laughs> Palo Alto. No one has tool That's sheds right. by the way. <laughs> no one does any gardening. Um, the the issue is at the end of the day. I need to have a reliable partner. So I want you to take a minute and explain to the folks who aren't yet Informatica customers why they should be, and the Informatica customers why they should stay with Informatica. 
Absolutely. So uh, well, certainly the ones, we have a very loyal customer base. So um, in fact, the guy that, who was presenting with us yesterday, he said he's been with Informatica since 1999, uh, going through various you know, versions of our products and adopting new, new innovations. So we have a very loyal customer base. And so I think that loyalty itself speaks for itself as well. Uh, as far as net new customers, I think that in a world of this increasing data complexity, it's exactly what you were saying. You need to find an approach that's going to scale. I've, I keep hearing this word from the chief data officers. It's like, I, I kind of have got something kludgy going on today. I don't know how I scale it. How, how is this going to work in 2018, in 2019, in 2025? And I, it's just daunting for some of these guys, especially going back to your point about compliance. Right? It's one thing if you just have data sitting around, the dark data, so to speak, yeah. that you're not using it. But God forbid now you got legal you know, and, and kind of regulatory concerns around it as well. So you have to get your arms around the data and that's precisely yeah. where Informatica can help because we've actually thought through these problems and we've talked about What's the number one problem you solve? I mean, because at the end of the day, we're talking about problems that have massive importance, big time consequences, and people can actually quantify. That's right. So what specific problem, highest level, do you solve that's the bit most important, that has the most consequences? It, everything from ingestion of raw data sets from wherever, like you said, in the cloud, on premise, all the way through all the processes you need to make it fully usable. And we don't we view that as one problem. There's other vendors who think that you know one aspect of that is a problem and then it's worth solving. But we really think, look, at the end of the day, you got raw stuff and you got to turn it into useful stuff. Everything in there has to happen, and so we might as well just give you everything and be very very good at doing all those things. Yeah. And so that's what we call enterprise cloud yeah. data management. It's everything from raw material to finished goods of you know insights. Yeah. We want to be able to provide that in a consistent, integrated, and machine learning integrated Well, you course. guys have a loyal customer base, but just to be fair, and you got to kind of acknowledge that there was a point in time, and not anyone can throw Informatica away the big customers, because you know, you big engagements. But there was a time in Informatica's history where you, know, you went private, there was some you know, new management came in, but there was a moment where the boat was taken on water, right? And you could almost look at it and say, hmm, you know, we're in the space. You guys retooled around that, success to the team, took it to another, another dimension. So that's the key thing is that you know, a lot of the companies become big, it's hard to get rid of. But who's innovating? So the question is, well just that's a statement, I think you guys have done a great job. Yeah, the boat might have taken on war, my opinion, but you can probably debate that. But I think it, you know, as you get mature and you're public, you guys went private. But here's, here's the thing, you guys have added good product chops to Informatica, so I got to ask you a question. What cool things are you doing? Because remember, cool shiny new toys help put a little flash and glam on the nuts and bolts data governance stuff that scales. Mm -hmm. What are you guys doing? I know you guys announced Claire and some AI stuff. What's the hot stuff that you're doing that's adding value? Yeah, absolutely. Well, so first of all, and then this kind of addresses your, your water comment as well, you know, so we're probably one of the few vendors that spends almost about $200 million in R&D, and that hasn't changed yeah. through the acquisition. Um, if anything, I think it's actually increased a little bit because now our investors are even more committed to innovation. Well, you're more nimble, you're private. You got a lot more nim nimble. Uh, absolutely. So yeah. there are a lot more, you know, kind of uh, yeah. ideas that are coming to the forefront. Um, so there's never been any water, just to be clear. <laughs> but um, to answer your, your follow-on question about you know, some examples of this innovation. So uh, you know, I think Amit yesterday talked about some yeah. of our, our recent release as well, but you know, we're really just trying to keep pushing on this idea of, I know I keep saying this, but it's this whole machine learning approach here yes. of how can we learn more about the data. So one of the features, I'll give you an example, is if we can actually go look at a file, mm -hmm. and if we spot like a name and an address and some order information, that probably is a customer, right? And that's and we can, we know that because we've seen past data sets in the. Yeah. So there's examples of this like this pattern matching where yeah. you don't even have to have data that's filled out, and this is increasingly the way the data looks. We're not dealing with relational tables anymore. It's JSON files, it's web logs, XML files. All of that data we, that you had to have, you know, data scientists go through and parse and sift through. We just automatically recognize it now. If we can like look for the data and understand it. We can match it. Put that in context to in the order of magnitude benefits that, that from the old way versus the, the current way. How, I mean, just what's the pain levels versus one versus the other? I mean, can you put context around that in terms of, I mean, <laughs> I mean, pretty significant. It's huge, you know, because again, it goes back to this sort of volume and variety of data that people are trying to get into systems and do it very rapidly. So I'll give you another really tangible uh, customer use case. So this is a customer that presented at Informatica World uh, a couple months ago. It's Jewelry TV, I can actually tell, I can tell you the name. So they're one of these online kind of shopping sites and they've got a TV program that goes mm -hmm. with the online site. So what they do is, they, you know, obviously when you promote something on TV, your orders go up online, right? 
they wanted to flip it around. And they said, look, let's look at the web logs of the traffic that's on the website and then go promote that on the TV program because then you get a closed loop and you start to have like this explosion of sales. So they used Informatica. They didn't have to do any of this hand coding. They just built this very quickly you know, with the graphical user interface that we provide. It leverages Spark streaming under the hood. So they're using all these technologies under the hood. They just didn't have to do any of the manual coding. Got this thing out you know, a couple days and it works. And they've been able to measure it and they're actually driving increased sales by taking the data and just getting it out you know, to the people that need to see the data very, very quickly. So that's an example of a use case where this isn't just, you know, to, to your point about, is this just like a small, you know, incremental type of thing? No, there's a lot of money behind data yeah. if you can actually put it to good it's use. Just, so the consequences are grave, and I think, you know, you're seeing more and more. I mean, the hacks just amplify it over and over again. It's not a cost center when you think about it. It has to be somehow configured differently as a profit center, even though it might not drive top line revenue directly like an app or anything else. It's not a cost center, if anything, it's going to be treated as a profit center because you get hacked or someone the day's misused, you can be out of business. There is no profit. Yeah, I mean look, the, at, look, the, at, look at the results of these hacks. The defensive argument is going to become very, very strong you know, as, as these regulations come out. But let's be clear, the, the, and we work with a lot of the most advanced customers. There are people making money off of this. It, it can be a top no, line it is. driver it when should you know be. how to use it. It should be, that's exactly the mindset. So the question, final question for you before we break, I know we're on time here, is that there are some chief data officers that are enabled, some aren't. And that's just my observation. I don't want to put anyone in a, in a pigeonhole, anyone. But some are enabled to really drive change. Some are just figureheads that are just managing compliance risk and work for the CFO and say no to everything. So I mean, I'm overgeneralizing, but that's essentially how I see it. What's the problem with that? Because this cost center issue has we've seen this movie before in the security business. Security should not be part of IT. That should be its own deal. Exactly. So we're kind of this is kind of smoke that we're seeing coming out of the 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 jungle here. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah, that? No, you're absolutely right. And we see a variety of models and you can see the evolution of those models. And, you know, it's also very contextual to different industries. I mean, there are industries that are inherently more regulated. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you're seeing the data people, you know, maybe more in those cost center areas that are focused on you know, regulations and things like that. There's other industries that are a lot more consumer oriented. So mm -hmm. for them, it makes more sense to have the data people be in a department that seems more revenue facing. So it's not entirely random. There are some reasons. That's not to say that's the right model moving forward, but someday you never know. I mean, there's a reason why this role became a CXO in the first place. Yeah. Maybe it is somebody who reports to the CEO and they really view the data department as a strategic you know, function. And it might take a while to get there, but I don't think it's going to take a long time. Again, we're talking about 40% growth in the data, and yeah. I think these guys are re realizing that now, and I think we're going to see very quickly people moving out of the whole tool shed model yeah. and moving to very systematic, repeatable practices, you know, yeah. mi sophisticated middleware platforms. And uh, As we say, don't be a tool, be a platform. Um, Murthy, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Um, what's going on in Informatica real quick? Things good? Things are great. Good, awesome. Live from New York, this is theCUBE here at Big Data NYC. More live coverage continuing day three after this short break. <laughs>